The Boston Bruins defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs on Hockey Night in Canada and then promptly announced a four-year contract extension for Pavel Zaka. We've also got a matinee game coming up Monday, so this is a special Monday episode on a Sunday. Let's get into it, shall we? Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Sunday, January 15th. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every single day, free and available on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. So please do smash that subscribe button. If you're on Twitter, Instagram, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. I'm recording here on Sunday because it was a busy Saturday with respect to our Boston Bruins. And there is a Monday matinee scheduled against the Philadelphia Flyers. So I thought it would be good to take some time today to reset, talk about the happenings from Saturday, and then quickly preview the game against the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's begin with the news that was announced after Boston's 4-3 win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. 4-3 4-3 becoming a common result there with some playoff rounds going to seven games in recent memory. Uh, General Manager Don Sweeney announced after the game that the Bruins signed Pavel Zaka to a four-year contract extension through 2026-27 with a cap hit of $4.75 million. That signifies a pay raise over his current $3.5 million contract that he signed as a one year deal restricted free agent after being acquired from the New Jersey Devils for Eric Halla. Now Zaka has been very good for the Bruins so far this season, five goals, 20 assists. He's on pace for 10 goals and 39 assists, 49 total points. And that would break the career high that he set last season in New Jersey, 36 points. Now his scoring is a bit down. He scored 17 in uh, 50 games two seasons ago. And there's room for improvement there for sure. His current 7.8 shooting percentage is below the 10.4 career average and well below that 16.5 mark he hit a couple years ago. He's also been playing more of a winger role with the Bruins. So if he's being counted on to play center, perhaps a second or third line center down the line, then that's still up for debate. And in fact, Don Sweeney said one thing they acquired him for was his versatility. He can play. All three forward positions, uh, they do have an eye towards center. They're wanting to find a way to continue to add to the group. He's shown that versatility this season, plays in all situations, has been a big part of the group, fit in very well, comfortable comfortable with several of his fellow Czechs on the roster, David Krejci, David Pasternak, Jakub Zborl, Tomasz Noshik among them. He's a very well-liked young man. They're happy to have him going forward for an additional four seasons. Zaka, for his part, said it's it's been good to move around a bit this season. One of his strengths is able to play either wing or center. Playing on such a good team, you already know that you have Bergeron, David Krejci, Charlie Coyle down the middle. So he expected to play some wing, but these guys are approachable. He can talk to them on a daily basis and they're helping him to grow as a player and as a teammate. He's very comfortable knowing that he's going to be here long-term. He was happy 
when he was traded to the Bruins. Uh, he was intent on showing what he can do. And it's his first season, still kind of integrating into the team, into the lineup. And he's glad that he'll have the opportunity to show what he can do long term. Um, the Bruins, he said, have a short memory this season, kind of taking it in five game game segments and a lot going ahead. And of course, some bigger goals that they have in mind. Um, now, when Sweeney was asked if there's anything new on David Posternock, he said a quick no. But Elliot Friedman on Hockey Night in Canada did say there is progress being made there. He did say every player is unique um, and they're approaching every situation differently. Obviously, they want to get Posternock signed to eight years instead of four years. And it's much bigger money involved. But Elliot Friedman did say there is progress being made. And for now, it is Zaka who joins the list of forwards signed beyond the season. That's not actually that lengthy. If you look at their cap friendly page, forwards signed beyond next season include, or sorry, beyond this season include. Brad Marchand under contract for two more years at 6.125 million. Taylor Hall for two seasons at 6 million. Charlie Coyle for three more seasons at 5.25. And then Zaka is actually the Bruin with the longest contract up front. Four years, 4.7 million. The likes of Bergeron, Krejci, Felino, Smith, Noshik can all become unrestricted free agents at the end of this season. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. But for now, a key piece locked up for uh, four more seasons. And it's a nice piece of work, I think, for both sides. It's not breaking the bank for the Bruins, perhaps a bit high uh, cap hit, but it could be very good value. Remember, he's only 25. Uh, he is a product of the 2015 draft. So him, DeBrusque, uh, some good players to build on moving forward from that draft. All right, coming up, we're going to discuss the win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. But first, this episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. They're an important partner with us that has developed an amazing product that you need to know about. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, aging, basically all the things. It costs you less than $3 a day and you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than, let's say, a cold brew habit. Cheaper than getting all the different supplements by yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance and to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. So there was, of course, a game played on Saturday between our Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs, one of the more entertaining games of the season. A pretty back and forth affair where the Bruins came out on top thanks to Matt Grizzlick scoring late in the third period. The win was Boston's 20th on home ice this season, giving them 70 points to date and an 11-point cushion over Toronto in the standings with a couple games in hand at that. So the Bruins pretty comfortably atop 
the Atlantic Division at this point. And a lot of people were saying during the game, oh, yes, a Toronto Tampa, uh, ser- I'm sorry, Toronto Boston series would be very entertaining. And that's certainly true. But it looks as though the Leafs will have to get through Tampa Bay once again in order to make that happen. Matt Grizzlick said it was a complete 60-minute game for the Bruins. First time in a while that they felt good about game from start to finish. They know the rivalry, how good of a team they are, and it was a bit of a statement game for the Bruins. Uh, They pride themselves on not losing two in a row, and that was the focus tonight. And the Bruins, indeed, are a perfect 9-0 this season following a loss. So they have yet to go on even a two-game losing streak, if you can even call it that. Uh, Now, Grizzlick, the hero in this one, going to give him big bear of the night performance. Jim Montgomery said it was his best game of the year. Two shots on goal, three blocks, a plus two, and, of course, the game-winning goal. Montgomery said he was unreal defensively and offensively. Glad he got rewarded because he's been really good here. In fact, I even pointed to him in the mailbag last week as an underrated player for the Boston Bruins. Connor Clifton, you could say, is underrated, but he has gotten a lot of love this season. I think people forget how good Matt Grizzlick is. He's so solid defensively, such a great puck mover, and it's not as obvious when he's not chipping in offensively, but he's been playing very well offensively. He's been excellent in terms of gap control defensively, and he's getting rewarded when he's having the puck. And uh, if he can start putting up some points, chipping in even more offensively, then that's just a bonus for the Bruins from the blue line already with Lindholm McAvoy contributing there. Uh, So that was a great moment for him. It was nice to see AJ Greer scoring his first goal since I believe October 18th or something like that. He started off pretty hot, um, beat Murray through the five hole in this one. And he's been in and out of the lineup an effective fourth line is important for the Boston Bruins, important for any team with championship aspirations. And he was due to um, put the puck in the back of the net. He, of course, was involved in some of the chicanery that was going on between these two teams, a spirited bout between Wayne Simmons and Nick Foligno. Uh, Greer and Simmons were both issued 10-minute misconducts when it appeared as though Michael Bunting tried to kick somebody. Uh, A lot of shenanigans going on. No love lost between those two teams. And and that brought out A.J. Greer's uh, emotion. He loves being a Bruin, Montgomery said. He knew what he was doing. He played with the right amount of emotion. And called scoreboard as well with the goal. And that was uh, super important. Uh, The fans were into this one. It was a playoff type atmosphere. And that the fact that the Bruins came out on top after losing to Toronto earlier in the season, um, you know, they have one game left. I believe the season series is up for grabs. Uh, The Bruins were very vocal about not wanting to lose two in a row. They didn't want to lose to the second place team in Toronto and have the gap narrowed to seven points, albeit with those two games in hand. Uh, The fact that they won this one, they play with emotion, they stuck to their game and expanded their lead over the Maple Leafs was, uh, was instrumental. Now it wasn't Linus Allmark's best game numbers wise, but he made some incredible saves, including a blocker stop just moments before Greer gave uh, the Bruins a lead. Taylor Hall had sprawled out to deny a 2-1-1. The puck popped out to Allmark's right. Mark Giordano appeared to have an open net, but Allmark, falling backwards, stuck out his right hand. It was reminiscent of that 
blocker save that Tuka Rask made a couple years ago where he kind of caught it with his blocker. Um, even on a night where his save percentage dipped and his goals against average rose, he made a handful of big time saves and just continued to take a stranglehold over uh, the Vesna trophy. So overall, a fantastic game for the Boston Bruins, uh, a fairly even matchup. And yeah, the Maple Leafs are a tough out for any team right now. They are one of the best teams in the NHL. Uh, they're third in points behind Carolina, tied with New Jersey. They have uh, the fourth best point percentage. They have the fifth best goal differential, but the Bruins are just that much better. And that was evident last night. The Bruins are now seven, one and two over their last 10, 21 and three at home, a plus 66 goal differential, a league low 94 goals allowed. They have the second most goals at 160 compared to Edmonton's 164 with three games in hand on the Oilers. Uh, so just another impressive performance for the Boston Bruins in uh, it wasn't a must win game by any stretch of the imagination. It was a regular season game in January, but it was on hockey night in Canada, uh, which I watched up here that broadcast. And it was a big, statement after having lost to Toronto back in November and in terms of expanding the gap between first and second in the Atlantic division. All right, we're going to do a quick preview of Monday afternoon's game against the Florida Panthers. But first, this episode is brought to you in part by Bet Online, And Bet Online is your number one source for all sports betting, info, stats, news, and analysis. They have all the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there from NFL playoffs, great weekend of action, to NHL action, NBA, MLB coming up right around the corner. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those there as well. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, the Philadelphia Flyers come into TD Garden playing pretty well over the last stretch of games. They're 18, 18, and 7 overall, pretty far out of the playoff picture, but they've won three in a row and they're 7 and 3 over their last 10. And they have some pretty talented offensive guys who are carrying the load at the moment. Travis Konechny, another 2015 draft pick with nine points over his last five, including five goals. Morgan Frost with five assists over his last five games. And Kevin Hayes is also having a bit of a resurgence for them this season. We know it's always emotional for him to come and play in Boston, 37 points in 42 games. For the Bruins, David Pasternak with nine points in his last five games to match Konechny. Eight goals over that stretch. Uh, McAvoy leading the way in his helpers with four over the past five games. And uh, it should be a pretty good game. Seven and three over the last ten. The Bruins are seven, one, and two. Now, the Bruins have a vast advantage in special teams they rank fourth on the power play compared to philadelphia's 29th philadelphia's 18th ranked on the penalty kill and the bruins are the best penalty killing team uh flyers are 26th offensively with 2.84 goals per game the bruins are second and philadelphia is allowing 3.16 goals while the Bruins are allowing only 2.17. So on paper, you would think the Bruins would have a pretty good chance to 
win their second straight game on home ice. But you never know with the matinee. And, uh, of course, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So there's plenty of afternoon action around the NHL. And uh, I'm excited to watch this one. Wow. Keeping an eye on work, obviously. Panthers, Sabres playing at the same time. Red Wings, Avalanche later that day. I'm just seeing that the Red Wings have put Alex Nedeljkovic on waivers which is a uh, which is a bit of a surprise there. In terms of Bruins in the scoring race, David Pasternak with 33 goals now in the season, he's four back of Connor McDavid, two ahead of Tage Thompson. His 59 points put him in fifth. Jason Robertson with 60, Nikita Kucherov at 62, Leon Draisaitl 68. Connor McDavid with a ridiculous 83 points. Linus Allmark still first in goals against average and save percentage this season. So that three goal game against Toronto, not affecting his status as the top goalie in the NHL so far this season. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this special Sunday episode in lieu of tomorrow's show. I thought it would be good to get the recap of the Toronto game. The Pavel Zaka news out today with the matinee scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, of course, on Tuesday, we'll recap the Flyers game as well as update the Eastern Conference power rankings and take a look ahead at what's next for the Bruins. A pretty uh, challenging end to the month of January ahead of uh, the All-Star break and their bye week. So we'll, we'll take a look ahead at their schedule as well. Hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, taking care of each other, and we'll talk to you again here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends.